Have you ever felt like an outsider in your own story? As if any moment now, someone would reveal you as a fraud. That's the heart of imposter syndrome. And it's more common than you might think, especially in high achieving environments like tech. Today, I'll share my journey of battling and overcoming this syndrome, blending in my personal story with strategies that can help you conquer it too. Let's rewind to the very beginning of my journey, where the seeds of doubt first took root. As a high school student, I found myself at UCLA, engaged in advanced research that most wouldn't dream of at that age. It was an incredible opportunity, but with it came an overwhelming sense of being in over my head. I remember staring at the lines of C++ code, feeling like I was trying to read a language I didn't speak. Every error, every bug felt like a glaring sign that I didn't belong there. It wasn't just the complexity of the code, it was the weight of my own expectations pressing down on me. I was in an environment where brilliance was the norm and I constantly asked myself, do I measure up? This feeling of uncertainty followed me through the application process for universities. Despite my achievements, I was plagued with self-doubt. I questioned my worthiness of getting into top tier schools. It led me to cast a wide net with my applications. I applied to a wide array of universities, including every Ivy League, UCs, Cal Polys, MIT, and Georgia Tech. This wasn't a strategy. It was a symptom of imposter syndrome. I was hedging my bets, unable to see my own potential. One incident that stands out was when my high school counselor noticed my hesitancy. She pulled me aside one day, questioning why I hadn't considered applying to Ivy League schools or MIT. In my mind, those were leagues beyond my reach. It took her encouragement to make me see that I was underestimating myself. This phase of my life was a constant battle between my achievements and my self-perception. Every success was met with a question, was I good enough or was it just luck? Looking back, I realized how this mindset was holding me back, not just academically, but in my personal growth as well. It was a formative period where the foundations of my later struggles with imposter syndrome were laid. But as I'll share, it was also the beginning of understanding how to navigate these doubts and emerge stronger on the other side. This pattern of thinking followed me relentlessly. Even as acceptance letters from prestigious institutions started arriving, the joy was short-lived. The more accolades I received, the louder the internal voices of doubt became. Each acceptance letter was met with disbelief rather than excitement. Why would they choose me? It was a question that often kept me up at night. The imposter syndrome was not just a fleeting feeling. It had become a lens through which I viewed all my achievements. The constant need for external validation became exhausting. I was living in a paradox, surrounded by evidence of my success, yet unable to internalize it. The summer before I started at MIT was a pivotal moment. I was determined to prepare myself as much as possible to bridge this imaginary gap I felt between me and my future peers. I immersed myself in learning and refining my knowledge of calculus, physics, and chemistry, not just to get ahead, but to prove myself that I belonged in those hollowed halls of MIT. The fear of being found out or labeled as not smart enough was a driving force overshadowing the excitement of embarking on the new academic journey. This period of my life was a stark reflection of the complexities of imposter syndrome. It wasn't just about feeling out of place, it was about constantly undervaluing my accomplishments and capabilities. It became clear that this wasn't a battle I could win by achieving more or working harder. It was a deeper, more introspective journey I needed to embark on. A journey to redefine my relationship with success and self-worth. The journey through the halls of MIT was challenging, not just academically, but also in finding my place among my peers. Aerospace engineering was my chosen field, a discipline that drew others in with the promise of reaching the skies and beyond. But here, amidst the brightest minds, I found another battle with imposter syndrome. In my classes, I was surrounded by students who had dreamt of rockets and airplanes since childhood. They spoke with a passion and depth of knowledge about specific models and engines that I just couldn't match. I remember working on projects where my classmates would excitedly discuss the latest developments in rocket technology. Well, my mind was focused on the software that could make these machines more efficient and effective. This divergence in interests left me feeling like an outsider. Despite excelling in my courses, there was always a lingering question. Was I really an aerospace engineer if my heart wasn't in the engines and wings? This internal conflict was a constant presence shadowing my academic achievements with a veal of doubt. The transition from school to the professional world marked the beginning of a new chapter in my imposter syndrome saga. My first role as a software engineer was a leap into an unknown territory. Here, I was no longer just a student. I was a professional, expected to contribute and innovate. In the early days, I often felt like a fish out of water. The technical jargon in meetings sounded like a foreign language. Questions like, is the endpoint running? Or did you grab the right auth token? Left me feeling confused. 
It was a clear reminder of how much I had yet to learn. However, this role also brought a revelation. I discovered my innate strength as a problem solver and a product thinker. These skills, which didn't quite fit into the traditional mold of a software engineer, became my unique value proposition. It was a slow realization, but an empowering one. In those moments of doubt and confusion, I found growth. I learned to embrace my unique blend of skills, which included both technical prowess and a keen understanding of product development. It was a journey from feeling out of place to carving out my own niche in the world of software engineering. As we reach the end of my personal journey with imposter syndrome, it's time to turn the focus towards practical solutions. My experiences from academic challenges to professional growth have not only shaped me, but also gave me valuable insights. Now I wanna share those learnings with you. These strategies are more than just theoretical concepts. They're practical tools refined through real experiences. Let's start by addressing a simple truth. Feeling like an imposter at times is completely normal, especially in fields like tech, where where innovation and excellence are constantly in the spotlight. It's easy to look around, see brilliant minds at work, and think, do I really belong here? But here's the thing, you're not alone in this. Many of us, even those who seem to have it all figured out, wrestled with these doubts. It's part of being human, part of growing in a competitive, fast-paced environment. The key is to not let these feelings dictate your story. Understanding that imposter syndrome is a shared experience, not a personal failing, can be incredibly liberating. It helps put things into perspective and makes you realize that these feelings are just bumps on the road, not the road itself. So next time you feel like you're not up to par, remember it's a common feeling and it doesn't diminish your achievements or your capabilities. This realization is your first step in shifting from self-doubt to self-confidence. It's about acknowledging these feelings, then taking a deep breath and saying, this is normal and I can handle it. You know there's something almost magical about sharing your doubts and fears with someone you trust. It's like shining a light into those shadowy corners of imposter syndrome. In my journey, talking about insecurities with colleagues and mentors not only helped me feel less isolated, but also brought some surprising revelations. Imagine this, you're sitting there thinking you're the only one struggling with these feelings of inadequacy. But then you take a leap and open up to a coworker or a peer. More often than not, you'll find out they've been in your shoes too. They might share their own stories of doubt and suddenly you're not alone anymore. These conversations create a sense of camaraderie and support that's invaluable. In the tech world where things move at lightning speed and everyone seems to be on top of their game, it's easy to feel like you're lagging behind. But when we start talking openly, we realize that we're all riding the same roller coaster. Some days we're up, solving problems and innovating. And some days we're down, doubting our every move. It's all part of the process. So don't hesitate to reach out and start these conversations. They're not a sign of weakness, rather they're a step towards building a supportive network and a more authentic work environment. These dialogues can be the bridge from feeling like an imposter to realizing you're an integral part of your team. In the tech world where innovation and skills are paramount, it's easy to undervalue your contributions especially when you're constantly comparing yourself to others. But here's the thing, you bring a unique blend of skills and perspectives to the table and that's invaluable. Think about it, whether you're in a university setting or a corporate environment, you're there for a reason. Universities don't just randomly pick students, they select individuals who they believe will thrive and contribute to their academic community. Similarly, companies hire you because they see potential, potential to add value, drive innovation, and propel the organization forward. They're investing in you and that's not a decision made lightly. Recognize Recognizing your value is about shifting your focus. It's not just about what you can do technically, it's also about the softer skills you bring. Your approach to problem solving, your ability to work in a team, your creativity, and your resilience. These are all parts of your value proposition. So take a moment to reflect on what you've achieved so far, the challenges you've overcome, the projects you've contributed to. Each of these is a testament to your value and remember, value isn't static. It grows as you grow. As you continue to learn and evolve, so does the value you bring your team an organization. Embracing this can shift your mindset from self-doubt to a more confident, grounded sense of your professional self. In the realm of tech where things are constantly evolving, trusting in your own skills and judgment becomes essential. Building self-trust starts with setting realistic, achievable goals. It's not about aiming for the stars on your first try, but about creating a series of small, attainable objectives. Each time you reach one of these goals, it's a little victory, a building block for your self-confidence. For me, this meant starting with manageable projects and gradually taking on more complex challenges. It was about proving to myself, step by step, 
that I could handle it, that I was competent and capable. Then there's the aspect of acknowledging your successes, no matter how small they may seem. In a field where there's always something new to learn or a higher goal to achieve, it's easy to overlook your progress, but taking the time to reflect on and celebrate your achievements is crucial. It reinforces your belief in your own abilities. Another part of building self-trust involves embracing failures as learning opportunities. In tech, where trial and error are part of the process, failures aren't setbacks. They're stepping stones to greater understanding and skill. Each mistake, each misstep is a chance to learn and grow. So remember, building self-trust is about acknowledging your successes, learning from your failures, and understanding that both are integral to your professional growth. It's about looking in the mirror and saying, I trust you to handle this. This mindset is your ally against the doubts of imposter syndrome. Shifting our focus to continual learning, this is more than just a buzzword. It's a mindset that's particularly crucial in tech, a field that never stands still. Embracing continual learning is about keeping your skills sharp and your mind open to new ideas and possibilities. Think of it this way. Every podcast you listen to, every book you read, every tutorial you watch is a step towards not only enhancing your skill set, but also building your confidence. It's about staying curious and engaged in your field. For for me, this meant dedicating time each day, whether it was during a morning commute or a lunch break, to learn something new. It could be as simple as a chapter from a book, a short online course, or a podcast episode related to my field. Continual learning also helps in breaking down the barriers of imposter syndrome by reinforcing the fact that nobody knows everything. In the rapidly evolving world of technology, there's always something new on the horizon. Understanding this makes it easier to accept that feeling uncertain or out of depth sometimes is perfectly normal. It's not a reflection of any inadequacy, but a part of the learning process. Moreover, this approach to learning keeps you adaptable, a trait highly valued in tech. It ensures that you're not just keeping up with the industry trends and technology advancements, but also cons constantly bringing fresh perspectives and ideas to your work. So embrace continual learning, not just as a professional obligation, but as a personal journey of growth and empowerment. Remember every bit of new knowledge you acquire is a tool in your arsenal against the doubts and fears of imposter syndrome. So now moving on to a crucial aspect of overcoming imposter syndrome, embracing your unique skill set. This isn't just about acknowledging the skills you possess, it's about appreciating the unique blend of talents and perspectives you bring to your role, particularly in the diverse world of tech. Every person in tech comes with a distinct combination of skills and experiences. It's like a mosaic. Each piece might be different and feel disjoint, but together they create something extraordinary. For me, understanding this was a game changer. I realized that while I might not be the top coder or the most experienced engineer in the room, my blend of problem solving abilities, coding skills, and understanding of product development created a niche that only I could fill. This realization is empowering. It shifts your focus from trying to fit a conventional mold to celebrating what makes you different. In tech, where innovation is key, it's these differences that drive progress and creativity. Whether you're a coder with a knack for design, an engineer with a passion for project management, or a developer with a talent for communication, your unique skill set is a significant asset. Embracing your unique abilities also means recognizing that no one is expected to excel in everything. Tech is a collaborative field, and the most successful projects often come from diverse teams where each member contributes something distinct. So take a moment to reflect on what you uniquely bring to the table, recognize and own your strengths, and see how these complement the skills of those around you. This perspective is not only a boost to your self-confidence, but also a powerful antidote to the feelings of being an imposter. So in our journey today, we've traversed through the valleys of doubt and climbed the peaks of self-realization. As you move forward, carry these insights not just as tools, but as companions in your journey towards confidence and success in the tech world. If you want long-term personal mentorship from me or other MIT affiliated mentors, apply to be a part of our first program cohort at aspirementors.tech apply. If you found this video helpful, these videos here should also help you on your journey. Thank you for joining me in this exploration. And as always, stay positive, stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next one.